I was a kid. I grew up in Bombay in India, and the first time they about I was about 15, and they had an air show, and that's when I really felt when I saw the fighter jets and everything. I felt hey, I need to work something related to aircraft and aerospace, and then Kalpana Chawla. I think what she meant for India was she was the first of all she was a woman, which was a big thing for India, a woman astronaut, and probably the second person in, in, of Indian origin to go in space. That was a big achievement for at least what the, my country India felt about her. So uh, she died in Colombia and she was of Indian origin and she was very popular then. She was the one who inspired me to really go into aerospace. I was around five years old. Um, my dad brought home this little Estes rocket kit. Uh, I didn't know much about it at all. I was just a little kid. Uh, we took it in the backyard and we shot it off. And uh, the funny thing was, is I was scared of it. The sound was so loud and I kind of turned away and hid. But uh, something inspired me and ever since then I've been intrigued to pursue rocketry. So, Well, I've always been uh, climbing walls in high places. Uh, I did see a, a fleet of F-117s fly above me one day. Well, I lived in Israel and I guess they had a base there, but there was a group of uh, five or seven of them. One day just, I guess, they making runs. It almost looked like uh, UFOs flying around from their uh, projected area. It's triangular, and I think from that point on, I pretty much said, that's what I'm going. I was in third grade, and uh, our teacher was showing uh, an old video of Neil Armstrong landing on the moon, and I decided I will be an astronaut one day. And uh, when people ask me what I want to do for the rest of my life, I was like, well, I want to do the same thing that I wanted to do when I was in third grade. I held on to the third grade dream, and. I'm going to be an astronaut one day. I think it has to be when I was in high school. I was watching a uh, CBC, that's the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation, uh, documentary on the Avril Arrow. It was kind of the last uh, designed jet fighter in Canada. And I, after watching that documentary, I was kind of pretty enthralled with the, the aerospace industry, and that's sort of what led me to go and get a mechanical engineering degree. So, and I joined the Air Force, the Canadian Air Force, right after. When I was eight years old, my folks took me to the Kennedy Space Center. And one of the displays there was a, a lunar rover with an astronaut suit on it. And you could sit down and have your picture taken on it. And, uh, and I did so. And very surprisingly to me, uh, the person in the suit put his arm around my shoulder. And at that point, uh, I decided I wanted to be an astronaut. So I embarked upon an adventure in the aerospace sciences and continued to work toward that goal. Basically what I've learned from this event is uh, how to help manage people and schedule their uh, their schedules to coincide with what we need to get done on the rocket. Toughest challenge essentially just uh, putting this uh, rocket together and following the uh, instructions because there's it may seem simple but there's a few things you know, like playing with epoxy we have a limited time and you gotta match everything perfectly and have it's precision work is what it is. You know we learned about teamwork basically putting a lot of different pieces together and a lot of the testing procedures you know we, we test fired the engine at our propulsion lab at school and so we had an opportunity to see things like that too. Mike and I, when we put the, the motor assembly in the bottom of the rocket, we had to glue centering rings and that epoxy, then we stood it up on vertically to cure. That epoxy dripped down and it actually wound up getting in the threads between our tail cone and the bottom. And so we epoxied these together. And so I actually took this thing home and cooked it in my oven at 550 degrees for about 45 minutes. And I was able to chip most of the epoxy off. And then finally we took it into the machine shop at uh, Naval Postgraduate School and the machinists had to get it apart. So <laughs> there, were, there were some last minute emergencies like that. Every part that we could possibly test, other than the stability, which was the one part we couldn't test, uh, went right. And the part that went wrong was the part that we couldn't test. We learned patience. We learned uh, <laughs> some patience. Uh, learn how powerful these rockets are. Yeah, yeah. we definitely learned how powerful the rockets are. We underestimated for sure uh, how powerful our motor was. I think a few of the groups did. Yeah. We, we picked the most powerful rocket, thinking it would go the highest, ended up disintegrating our rocket because it was too powerful. Mm -hmm. Didn't really account on that because no one did structural analysis. Everyone just thought more power means you go higher up, but no one factored in the fact that it might blow up your rocket. <laughs> it spiraled out of control. <laughs> It did the best yeah. possible way. It didn't survive. Well, pieces of it did. Yes, as you can see. Just make a new one. Sure. I think what we actually think it ended up happening was uh, on the footage that we were looking at, one of the fins looks like it fell off. 
um, in flight, and so that made it unstable. It started spiraling out of control, and then the rest of it blew up. So we didn't get to recover the fins, but that's a theory. We, we have the most the expensive. Important. The yeah. most expensive, <laughs> yeah. the ones we can reuse next year. We got yeah. the uh, the motor mount, which is $170. <laughs> bean, bean. <laughs> and uh, the, actually the piece that went over this is where the fins were, and that's what we didn't come recover was the piece over that. And then The nose cone, which has the best paint job, so at least we cover that. <laughs> we also got the parachute, so yeah. that's pretty unique. And we saved the payload, but the other team has it now. There's a lot of good things, I think, that came out of the, uh, the, today's event. Um, we had some very successful launches that took off. Uh, everyone really got to see a lot of their hard work actually pay off. Uh, these rockets took about three months to build, um, so people did get to actually see their rockets fly, the parachutes deploy, and get some data, which was pretty important. Uh, for the rockets that came apart, uh, they got to see that maybe the bonding agents they use to put fins on or, or paint or hold, hold the rockets together were perhaps not quite adequate for the engines they were using. Um, a lot, everyone pretty much learned that uh, for the rocket kits that we had, if you used a low power engine, um, the rocket held together and it did good. If you used a high power engine, the rocket came apart. So generally people developed a good set of engineering experience.